Hello, and welcome to another quick lesson with me, Jacob Walcock. Today we're going to explore the world of stop motion animation, and you're going to create something that looks a little bit like this. Meow, 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 meow. Where is Mr. Tibbs? Where's that cat gone? <gasps> ah! You're not Mr. Tibbs. Beep, boop, beep, boop. <gasps> What's that? Save the day. Pretty great, isn't it? I'm going to guide you through this process step by step, and we'll do five easy to follow activities to get to this end result. So first of all, we're going to find some props, or even make some props, to use in our video. These are going to be real life objects that you can gather from the world around you. And then, we're going to start using an app called Stop Motion Studio to actually record our video. It's really simple and great fun, you're going to love this step. Then, in step number three, we're going to make some changes to make sure the video flows nicely, and to make sure the timings are good. In step four, we're going to add our own voiceover or narrative to go along with your video, which is where you can really add some fun and personal elements. And then finally, in step number five, we're going to export our stop motion studio project as a video file that you can then use elsewhere. So all you really need to complete today's quick lesson is an iPad with the stop motion studio app installed. It's completely free on the App Store, and if it isn't on there already, grab that app now. You're also going to want a few items around you, and these can be anything from a glue stick to some modelling clay to some Lego models like I'm using. When you've got those things, let's start step number one. Here we go! Alright, before we get started doing any recording, we want to create our scene, that's our background, and we want to choose what characters or objects we're going to use in our animation. So I'm going to suggest you get your iPad open now, then you can see through the iPad screen. And you're going to want to position this somewhere where it can remain still throughout. There's no good if you're going to nudge it or knock it by accident, or if it falls over, because that's going to ruin your animation. As you can see, I've got my iPad here against the shelf with the wall behind it, and I'm going to bring in a couple of objects to add some interest to my background. These aren't going to be moving, but they are just going to be there to give you something to look at. And then, of course, being me, I've got quite a few Lego models, and I'm going to bring in this excellent brick heads that I've made of me, and also Mr. Tibbs, my cat. And I've got some Lego robots as well, because they might come into play a little bit later on in the video. Position these and get a feel for how these objects could be used. Don't be put off at this stage if you haven't got Lego objects or characters even to use. Some of the best stop motion I've ever seen has been made using glue sticks and pairs of scissors that suddenly come to life. Or maybe a toy car that you can have flying around your room. Or maybe you've got some coloured modelling clay and you can do some really cool modelling figure animations. Your imagination is the only limit here, so go and find some objects, and then let's bring them to life. Feel free to pause the video here while you go and gather some things, and when you're ready we'll start step number two together. Now let's open up the Stop Motion Studio app, and we'll create a new project straight away. And from here the app is very simple. The majority of the screen is your camera feed, and at the bottom you've got that dark grey area. These are where you're going to have your photographs, because if you didn't know, stop motion animation is made up of a series of photographs, with very subtle changes between each one. On the right hand side you've got the camera shutter button, and if you press that, a new picture will show up at the bottom of your screen. The trick now is to make a very subtle movement to something on your screen. So for me, I've got my cat, Mr. Tibbs, in Lego form, hiding behind the vase of flowers. If I move him forwards ever so slightly, and then press the camera button again, followed by moving him a bit more, and pressing that button again, and then moving him a little bit more again, before pressing the camera button, you'll then start to see a series of photographs building up on my timeline down below. You'll notice as I do this that my hand is coming in and out of the frame to move the objects, and really that's unavoidable, unless you can use some sort of telekinesis to move things with your mind, Probably we're not there yet. So when you take your photo, make sure your hands are not in that picture. And even better, if your hands are casting a shadow, try and get them well away before you take that picture. That way your finished animation will look better. I'm going to repeat this process now while I tell my story using my characters. And have fun with this. This is really your creativity and your chance to shine. This may take you 20 minutes or half an hour, so don't rush it. And try and aim for somewhere around 150 or 200 photographs at this stage. There really is no limit though. In fact, the more pictures you have, the longer your animation will be later on. Try not to do too few pictures though. So I would say 100 should be a minimum, and that will give you a good 7 or 8 seconds of animation later. Oh, and don't worry if you make a mistake, or get a photograph of the wrong thing, or put your hand in it by accident. I'll show you in the next step how to get rid of those accidental photos. 
Okay, as I said, you're going to need quite a bit of time to complete that last step, so pause the video here, and when you're ready, we'll move on to step number three together. Now it's time for the really fun bit of watching your animation come to life. So you're going to swipe right back to your very first photograph, or press the jump to beginning button, and then tap play. I'm sure you've been desperate to do this, and you may have done it already if you're a bit sneaky, but we'll watch it through together now. Already I'm liking how that looks, but I do feel like it's a little bit stuttery. It kind of goes jump, 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 rather than being a smooth video. And that's what we're going to change next by adjusting the timing of your video. So you can change how quickly the pictures progress along that sequence, and you do that by pressing the little cog icon. From here you can go onto timing and you can drag that slider wherever you want. If you go to something like 24 frames per second, that will be 24 photographs per second. Let's see how that looks now by changing that setting and then pressing play. You can see it's a lot smoother, can't you? But it's also super quick, a bit too quick for my taste. So I'm going to press that cog icon again and go onto the timing settings and choose somewhere like 12 frames per second. You can experiment here and find what works for you, but this is the result that I get with 12 frames per second. Yeah, I really like it, that's the timing for me. There is one frame towards the end of my video where it goes quite badly out of focus, and that detracts for me from the rest of the video. You may have frames where you put your hand in it by accident, or where there's a shadow, or where something's fallen over, but don't worry, you can change it. Swipe along at the bottom to get to that image, tap on it, and on that pop-over menu you can press delete. Have some time here to explore your timings and delete any frames that you don't like, and when you're ready, set number four is here waiting for you. Now's the time to really bring your animation to life by adding a voiceover or a narrative. So you want to jump right back to the beginning of your animation, to that very first photograph, and on the bottom toolbar press the microphone. From here, find a quiet space, and then press record. And your video will play through at the speed you chose earlier, and you can talk into your iPad to add your narration. Just like this. Where is Mr. Tibbs? Where's that cat gone? <gasps> ah! You're not Mr. Tibbs. Beep boop, beep boop. <gasps> What's that? Save the day. If you're happy with your first take, you can press done, and that will then add it to your video. Or if you want to, you can re-record that as many times as you need to get the perfect voiceover track. Let's have a quick pause here while you go and do that. And then finally, step number five will begin when you're ready. The last thing to do today is to export your video file as a movie to watch elsewhere. So at the bottom, press that back arrow, and then on your projects browser, you're going to press select in the top right corner. From here, tap onto today's project, and then you can press the export button. You've got a few different options here, from animated GIF to movie to still images. I'm just going to choose export movie. And then on the next screen, just press save video. It's really simple, but now that video is in the Photos app. Let's hop into Photos very quickly and check it's all there, and when you open it up and press play, your finished piece should look something like this. Meow, 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 meow. Where is Mr. Tibbs? Where's that cat gone? <gasps> ah! You're not Mr. Tibbs. Beep boop, beep boop. <gasps> What's that? Save the day. Amazing. Well done. We've now completed our stop motion quick lesson for today, and we've learned a whole new app. We've learned about frame rates and speed, we've learned about how to make micro movements in objects to make them appear like they're animated, and we've learned how to do a voiceover and export that as a movie as well. Plus, hopefully your creativity's had a chance to shine, and you've made something you're really proud of. Well, look, I really hope you've enjoyed today's quick lesson, and I hope you've managed to make a stop-motion animation that's fun, personal, and creative to you. If you're able to share them, I would love to see. So please do share them on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag QuickLessons, or tag me at Jacob Walcock in there as well. Or if you like, let me know in the comments down below how you found this tutorial. There are loads more Quick Lessons on my YouTube channel just like this one. In fact, there's a couple more on the screen there for you now. Why not give them a go next? <laughs>